Welcome to Inspired Uncut by TMG Yachts, our new series aimed at providing raw and unedited walkthroughs so that you feel like you're looking through the boat with us in person. In this episode, we're taking a look at the Lagoon 51. Enjoy! Hello and welcome aboard the Lagoon 51. We're here to give you an uncut walkthrough of this awesome new model from Lagoon, just as though you were here in Cannes in the beautiful south of France yourself. So come on board, let's take a look through. The beautiful spacious cockpit with seating and dining to port, a lovely L-shaped bench. The table does double in size, so it becomes a really great dining area for 10 people. There is an external wet bar here as well. There's the fridge. And on this side, we have, you can have an ice maker here, but this is just set up for storage. In the top, we do have a sink as well, so you can do a lot of your entertaining uh, from externally without having to go inside. Under this day bed here, there is fantastic storage. It's quite deep, quite large. You can get a number of spare parts, lines and fenders in there. Across the stern of the cockpit, there is this beautiful seat. Uh, it's really quite a decent size. The cushions are set into the gel coat. Um, and then there is also uh, life raft storage below, this, below the cushions. We can do an optional tender lift on the stern as well. This boat is kitted with the standard davit system. But the tender lift is a platform which lifts your tender out of the water. Uh, when the tender's in the water, it gives you a lot more real estate for relaxing and lounging on the stern of the boat. As usual on the Lagoon Catamarans, the engine access is very good. Plenty of space in there around the engine for working on the engine, servicing and the like. This Lagoon 51 is equipped with 80 horsepower Yanmar engines. Lagoon 51 also features incredibly large stern bathing platforms. These also come all the way out to the rail of the vessel to make sideboarding when you're side to the dock even easier. Heading up to the bow, we've got three steps up to the main deck level. And as you walk forward, you'll notice all the hatches are flush mounted in the deck, reducing uh, trip hazards throughout the boat. Note the circulation as we're walking around the boat. The, the flybridge, which we'll go to in a minute, does have dual access, so you can access from both sides. This circulation is to the main deck. On the port side, it goes into the cockpit. Handrails are also very good on the Lagoon 51. Handrails everywhere, as well as the side access on the rail of the boat. So if you're moored next to another boat or on a dock that's considerably higher than a standard marina berth. Making our way forwards, the bow area is very large. You know, this is the big sister of the Lagoon 46 and you can really get a, you know, an appreciation for the size difference, especially when there's a 46 next to us, uh, like we have at the show here. A sunken cockpit makes it a very comfortable lounging and seating area. We call this the forward cockpit because it really is another area where you can uh, hang out and relax have a drink in the evening. Even under sail, this is quite a nice place to be. Seamless connection also through to the saloon. This big opening window uh, does allow, you know, ease of communication as well as passing drinks through. So a very nice feature there. Underneath the seating at the forward cockpit, we have a lot of the utilities. So in here we have the generator. Under this side, we have a huge, huge storage area. You'll notice as well the anchor windlass is nicely covered underneath this cowling. So it really makes use of something that, you know, otherwise wouldn't be here. So you can have drinks, bottles, bottles of champagne in there. There is great storage in both ends of, or both bows of the vessel. Jump in quickly. Just to show you the actual depth that we have in here. So I'm around six foot and I'm standing in here and the deck is just above my head. You can see there's plenty of gear, a lot of fenders and lines and stuff that's uh, being hidden for the show. But this can be kitted out either as a crew cabin, so you can have two additional crew berths, one on either side, or you can leave it just as storage.
Coming out, we turn our attention to the uh, sails on the front of the boat. This one is rigged with a standard uh, Genoa. It's on a manual Facknor furling system. You can upgrade this to an electronic furling system, so it's push button furling of the sail uh, from the flybridge. You can also add a bowsprit also with an electric furler. So makes this a very uh, simple operation for all your sails on the front end of the boat. Let's carry on. Down here, very important, a anchor wash slash deck wash uh, outlet. So this is connected to the main water system on the boat. So raising and lowering the anchor, you can rinse the salt off, or you can just connect a hose and rinse the decks down if, if you do have plenty of water on board. The anchor system on the Lagoon 51 is quite significant. You've got a very 18 mil um, thick bridle and a 12 mil chain with a nice hefty anchor on it. The storage locker in the side of the port and the front of the port bow is the same size as the one I was just in. Again, it can be optioned uh, as a crew cabin if need be. One of the principal keynotes for the design of the Lagoon 51 when we were looking at, you know, putting this boat together was to increase the solar capacity available. So on the Lagoon 51, you can order a package. Uh, it's a solar package, but it, it involves flexible panels all over the top of the coach roof down the sides, either side of the flybridge and on top of the flybridge. All together with the flexible panels, you can get around uh, 2,800 watts. So it's quite a significant uh, setup on a, uh, on a boat of this size. Should be plenty for cruising. Moving back down the uh, port side of the vessel, we'll make our way up onto the flybridge. Now, this is probably the best part of this vessel. As you notice here, access can be either from the cockpit or from the rail. So what we have here when we're sailing offshore, we can ban the crew members from leaving this position and going out to the rail. So access from the cockpit all the way up to the flybridge is internal. So it's a quite a safe solution. Up on the flybridge, all the controls and all the winches, all the running of the vessel can be done from here. When you're flying a code zero, the sheets are routed to the winches up here and obviously the mainsail and the jib are also rooted up here. The helm position itself is on a pedestal. This is nice, it lifts the Raymarine uh, plotter. We've got a 16 inch plotter here. Uh, so decent size, all the Raymarine MFDs. I uh, got my operational lights, so mast light, anchoring light, steaming light, navigation lights are all down here. Yanmar engine controls and my Yanmar throttles here. So. These are the standard throttles, but they can be upgraded to electronic throttles if you wish. We also have an anchor remote here, which is excellent. You can undo the safety, prepare the anchor to drop, and then drop the anchor on your own. Again, making it a very uh, usable boat uh, for those sailing shorthanded or even on their own. All the electric, or all the, all the winches can be uh, optioned as electric, just to make life on board that little bit easier. The main sheet traveler is also on an electric flat winder. This aft section of the flybridge is really where the 51 comes into play. There is amazing seating around here, a great little coffee table, and it really becomes a focal area uh, when you are sailing. Uh, the skipper is not left alone. The skipper is not on the flybridge with all his friends downstairs. This is the place to be, especially you know in, a, in, a, in the sea when the boat's moving around, anyone feeling a little bit queasy, the flybridge is the best place because you have the best visibility all over. The flybridge can also be enclosed with a clear canopy. It goes all the way around. So on a windy day like we've got today, you can probably hear the wind in the mic a little bit. Um, it can be lovely and warm, kind of a bit of a conservatory up here. Important thing to note as well is the flipping back on the helm station seat. So when I'm driving the boat, I can sit like this, but when you get to the anchorage and you open a bottle of champagne, you can flip this around and uh, be in kind of a social focal point towards the back of the, the flybridge. The bimini above me is tall. Again, about six feet for me, so plenty of room above my head with excellent windows in so I can view the sails. So sailing along, sailing along be it here, or at the, you know, more of the throttle controls over here. I've got view all the way up the rig to the mast. 
let's make our way down now into the main cockpit. Again, we're using that internal access. Important to note, just under the stairs I just came down is the gas locker. It's obviously an external gas locker with a drain, so it's very safe, but we can fit uh, one or two bottles in there. This bench seat can slide as well. It's not a sliding one in this current setup, but it can be optioned to slide to allow the table to extend for maximum dining area. Moving into the saloon, we have a kind of two part kitchen section or two part galley section. On the port side, we have all the, uh, the sinks and the, the microwave and the oven. On this side, we've got all the refrigeration and prep space. This is a double fridge here. And you can, this is storage at the moment, but you can add another freezer here as well as another fridge down in the passageway. So it really doesn't leave you um, wanting refrigeration space. Plenty of great storage just above your head height here. Doesn't really take away uh, from your visibility. It's obviously solid uh, bulkhead here, um, but it does give you heaps of storage and heaps of space for all your galley items. We'll work our way around to the, to the main part of the galley in a minute. But over here we have the, uh, the helm station. This boat is fitted with the Elegance line finish. So what that means is it's got a, um, like a, a lovely faux leather suede uh, fitted to a number of the surfaces, the, um, the pod for the uh, Raymarine display has got nice coverings on it and it really helps just to lift the internal feel because it's not um, just the internal wood. Got a 12 inch display uh, down at the helm station and you can see actually it's got the, um, the bird's eye view uh, system on it. It's a new system from Raymarine, but it gives you full imagery, live imagery around the vessel to help when you're parking, more essential. You can see it from the helm station on the plotter up there. The TV on the Lagoon 51 comes out of here. This one doesn't have it installed, but you can get a 42 inch TV on here that stows away completely out of sight when you don't want to use it. Sound system is controlled just below the TV. And then on the port forward side of the saloon is the lounging and dining area. Now this is the standard table. It's quite a large table and it is fixed. There is an option to have a smaller table which doubles in size and is also on a hydraulic pedestal. So it can be a coffee table low down, which makes this more of a day lounging area, or you can raise it up and have it folded out uh, to make this the main internal dining area on a similar size table to what we have here. The seating around here is quite large. You could have two people on the end, three people down the side, probably two people on this central bench here. And then all I have to do on the end here is pull the helm, helm station, you know, the internal helm station seat here. And I've got how many? Two, three, three, nine people seated quite comfortably around the internal table. Important to note on the 51, we're actually a slight step up from the main galley area where we're filming from. This adds a nice bit of separation. It makes it feel um, a little bit, you know, apart from the galley. So you've got really got a, a lounging and a dining area and then your galley just aft. On the Lagoon 51, a departure from previous models in this size, the mast has been moved forward. So this is the compression post here. Previously, the mast was coming out of a, um, a central storage unit. Uh, just where this uh, this seat is by the table. So moving the mast forward opens up a lot of room in the saloon. Making our way now to the port aft corner of the saloon, we have the main galley area, a large sink, lovely Corian light finished worktops throughout as well, which really make it pop. The gas cooktop and a oven just below. Convection microwave also here as well. So for um, if you don't wanna get the big oven going, you can use that storage very similar to what we have on the other side, but heaps of overhead storage just above. Again, doesn't restrict any view. I can see out the back and I can see out the side underneath the storage level. Here we have a cutlery drawer, conveniently located. This is a storage locker, but it can be optioned as a dishwasher. I think you can get six sets, so six plates, six bowls, six cutlery, all, all the rest of it in there as a dishwasher and then another drawer underneath. Under the sink, we have more storage and a dedicated bin area as well. 
It's a good point, good time to note as well on all Lagoon models from 2024, we'll be doing a standard UV filtration system on board. So this is a two part system. It's got a fine micron filter as a primary filter. And then underneath the sink on the main galley tap only, it goes through a UV filter. So it fires UV light through the water. It's completely sterilizing it. Uh, the brand we're using is called Uvoji. Um, so very cool innovation. It's all about reducing plastic waste. You know, we don't need to bring on 50 plastic bottles when we're going out for the weekend because we know that we can drink the water straight from the tanks. There is great storage under the floor. It's actually really rather large. I stand in, you know, all the way nearly, nearly to my knee there. And we've got two of these, one on either side of the saloon. So there is more storage underneath this central seating area as well, as well as the whiskey cabinet where all your expensive bottles can live. We'll just make our way down now into the master cabin. As we go head down the stairs, we have the main control panel for the vessel, um, conveniently located next to the nav station. So I've got all my electronics, navigation lights can be operated from here, as well as the master switch for all the lights on board, bilge pumps, bilge pump alarms, water pressure pump, and the refrigeration can all be done from here. The master cabin on the 51 is really quite special. Um, it's huge, it's long, and it's um, got multiple different areas. So at the very back or the very stern, uh, we have the sleeping bed. <laughs> Not a very good way to say it, uh, but we have the berth, it's called a berth on a boat, um, with a lot of natural light. So big natural window at the stern, big hull window as well, as well as ventilation right above the bed with a fly screen as well, of course. So you don't need to rely on your aircon at night because the hatch is open forwards. And if you're on an anchor, the wind gets funneled in really nicely. Storage on the 51, I keep going on about storage, but it is important on a boat. Uh, we've got excellent hanging room here and a washer dryer just here. I think it is a washer dryer. I'm not quite sure, but I think it is a washer dryer just conveniently located. You wouldn't know it was there, which is great. There's also a safe in here which is a nice little addition to the master cabin. Moving further aft, we have more storage lockers here with shelves and then storage under here, drawers like so. Underneath the bed, and this is fairly standard on all lagoons, we've got a very large drawer. Now this is probably too big for clothing, but you could store all your spare, you know, store all your spare bed sheets and towels and Manchester is I think what we call it in Australia. Moving further forward, we have a writing desk slash workstation. Uh, there is a little seat which you can pull out. It does have storage inside and a light here. So this could be set up if I was working on a boat, if I was working remotely, you could set up a really nice you know, monitor here, then have your laptop as well. Making our way further forward, we have a, a day bed or a, a little settee slash sofa in the master cabin. Um, there are lots of places to sit on a boat. You can sit on the flybridge, you can sit out forward, you can sit in the cockpit and the saloon. But I'd encourage people to go for, you know, you know, use this space simply for putting on your shoes. The bed's too high to sit on, but I can sit down, put on my shoes and then go and get on with my day. The door for the master cabin slides. Useful storage in the door. You could use it for hats. We've got some magazines in here for the show. And this brings us again, we're banging on about storage, but it brings us in to the walk-in robe. And this is a unique feature on the 51. You've got multiple drawers for storage of your clothes and personal items. Very nicely done. So you can be really organized often on a boat. It's, it's a little bit messy with uh, personal item storage, but um, you can do this all really nicely. This does have a door which closes, a sliding door which closes just like so. This compartment here can also be optioned as a cabin. It's about a one and a half uh, size berth, so it's not a double, uh, but it can be done as a cabin 
in the same way that we've got on the port side of the boat on the other side, which we'll have a look at shortly. This would be great if you had uh, very young children or living with very young children on board, um, living in the parents' room, but not in the parents' room. Coming through to the bathroom or the head, this isn't actually the head in here. Um, we have the full width shower with a rain shower in it. Again, plenty of natural light. We've got a whole window. Uh, there are three large windows down the side of the boat, so heaps of light coming in. And one of the best things is the him and hers sink. Um, one for each of the occupants of the master cabin. Nice mirrors and plenty of storage underneath. Again, we've got a really nice Corian finish in here, so it really makes the, the whole bathroom pop quite nicely. Great storage cabinet just here. If you actually bring the camera through, there is a mirror on this door, but there is more hanging room, just in case you didn't have enough. And then if you pull the camera in even more, there's a fake back to this, and there is even more. I'll turn the light on so we can, there we go. So that's huge. You know, you could fill that full of bags and suitcases. Everyone comes on board for the week and unpacks and you stick all the stuff you're not gonna use in there, keeps it out of the way. It's really great just making use of all the little unused areas on the boat. Mirror slides across, reveals more storage and closes the storage. The 51 has a completely separate toilet compartment. So as part of the main cabin, uh, it is a fully private toilet. Ah, hello. hello. Come on in, we're leaving. Let's, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the port side and have a look at the cabins we've got there. So we're finished with the main master cabin. We'll head into the port side now and take a look at, there are three cabins on this side. In the position where the walk-in wardrobe was on the master side, we do have the um, kingle, I like to call it like a king single berth. Um, correct your children, or if you do have crew on board, uh, it's also a nice place, but it's nice if you did that, it's got air conditioning when you select the air conditioning uh, system. This is now the forward cabin on the port side. This is the, um, the smaller of the two VIP cabins or the two main cabins on the port side, but it does have a very sizable uh, berth. Uh, it is semi walk around here, so making it, you know, doing all the, um, making the bed is a little bit easier. And great hanging room just here. Under bed storage as per usual, as well as very easy access. What you'll notice in all the lagoons is all the sole boards lift up so you've got access into the bilges and under the floor. The forward cabin uh, on the port hull has a, a, a bathroom which is private, but it can also operate as a day head. So there's a door here for the bathroom and there's also a door just here. They both go into the same area and this can also be used as a bathroom for the cabin that doesn't have a bathroom. So it doubles up as a day head and a cabin for you know the crew cabin or the kids uh, in the smaller cabin just across the way. Great headroom, nicely fitted out again. Natural light, ventilation, good mirror, Corian finish worktops, and of course, storage for personal items. Let's make our way now into the last cabin on board that we haven't looked at. At the stern of the port side, just before we go into that cabin, there is storage here, but you can also do a, um, a fridge or a freezer in the companion way. So in addition to the three quite large fridges you got in the galley, you can do one in the wet bar outside as well. Let's not forget that. So this would be fridge number five, which is quite significant. The berth on the port aft cabin is the same size as the master. Okay, so it's the same size berth just the cabin layout changes. Um, what do we say? It's got, again, natural light, ventilation, just like the master cabin does. All cabins come with USB um, sockets actually plumbed into the electricity, so you don't need to bring your adapters. Just plug your phones and your tablets straight in. Um, again, storage 
underneath the bed as before and access into the bathroom just here. Bring the camera around and we'll go in and have a quick look. There we go. All cabins have a completely separate shower compartment, uh, which is essential on a boat of this size. Corrine worktops and the toilet, natural light and storage. A bit more storage behind the door just here. Again, hanging room. So in, in recent months, Lagoon has made the change to 100% recycled fabric as part of their June upholstery package. So this is a standard upholstery on board, um, the Lagoon 46 and the 51, um, and it is 100% recycled. So that brings to the end of our uh, Lagoon 51 uncut walkthrough. We are at a boat show. The boat is live. It's, we haven't shut the boat down for this. So there have been people on board. Thank you for watching. We do hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. My name is Joe Fox from the team at uh, TMG Yachts. And if you did enjoy the video, if you do like the look of the Lagoon 51, do get in touch. Uh, we've got a good team uh, here at TMG Yachts who would love to talk to you about what this amazing new model has to offer. This has been a slightly different style of video. We're trying to keep the cuts to an absolute minimum uh, to really you know, make you feel like you're on board being shown through the boat by me at the boat show. So let us know if you did enjoy it. It's different from what we've done before, but let us know if it was good. We'll do more. If not, we'll change again. We do have another walkthrough on the Lagoon 51, which was filmed at the premiere launch of this model with my colleague Marnie. So if you do want to see more of a polished uh, production with some nice overlays and maybe even a bit of music, uh, do head on down to the YouTube channel and find that one there.